Hey all, in this Programmer Reviews Programming Games video, we'll look at Human Resource Machine. We're gonna check out what kind of game it is, and then we'll dive into what programming aspects it has. We'll also talk about if it's any fun, and if it can teach you something about programming, regardless if you've never ever done programming before, or if you're already a seasoned professional. Human Resource Machine should really be called Box Management Machine. Everything you do in the game revolves in some way around taking boxes from the left side of the screen and depositing boxes to the right side of the screen. But it's actually a lot more interesting than that sounds like. Each level has a set of rules that tell you what to do with those boxes. At the start of the game, it could be as simple as move all the boxes from the inbox on the left to the outbox on the right. Later, you might need to only move boxes that have a zero in them. These rules keep increasing in complexity as the game goes on, to a point that even I struggled figuring out some of the solutions. And I've been programming for over 15 years. The rules for each level is where the programming aspect comes into play. Instead of, say, clicking and dragging boxes with the mouse, you need to create what is essentially a program that completes the necessary steps in order to complete the level. Now, rather than typing in code, in Human Resource Machine you use a visual interface. You arrange commands in a sequence using your mouse. This makes the game approachable even for those who have never done any programming whatsoever. Now, the game does give you a set of commands somewhat similar to how you might write real code. The variety of available commands increases as you progress through the game, allowing you to complete more and more challenging and varying tasks. For someone who is new to programming, building programs in this way can serve as an introduction to sequential logic or imperative programming, where you need to tell the computer what you want done in a very specific set of steps. For those who have been programming for a while, the challenge comes more from how limited this set of commands is. For example, some of the puzzles task you with doing division and calculating the remainder of a division. This would be pretty easy to do if there was a simple divide command, but the only math-related commands the game has are add and subtract. The limited commands can also be where the game is a bit disappointing for those expecting more logic or programming-oriented puzzles. Since the commands are fairly limited, the puzzles end up being more about how to do complicated calculations or comparisons. This would be easy in real programming languages, and can be a bit tedious in the game for those looking for something else. If you were, for example, looking for more logic-oriented things, rather than figuring out how to calculate Fibonacci numbers with a fairly limited set of commands. When comparing the game's puzzles to real programming, the closest analog would probably be Assembly. The developers of the game have in fact said that the game is based on it. Assembly is very close to raw machine code. The commands are fairly simple, and while you can solve a variety of problems with them, the programs you write don't necessarily resemble program code you might write in languages which are used more commonly these days. While the command set is limited, the game does offer enough variety to keep things interesting, even for more seasoned programmers. It has some puzzles which somewhat resemble memory management in C, and it also has the basic concept of a pointer in it. But what really makes the game shine is how everything is represented visually. Almost all the commands in your program make something happen on the screen. A box is picked up, two numbers are combined together, or maybe a line from a memory slot points to another, showing how a pointer might work. This makes understanding what's happening much more intuitive than in real programming. I know that beginners often struggle to understand exactly what's going on in their programs, and Human Resource Machine makes it very easy to see that. This brings us to the other real programming feature in Human Resource Machine, debugging or fixing problems in your code. If your program does the wrong thing, you can simply rewind it step by step. This is also shown visually in the same way as the program is shown running. It becomes very easy to see what your program is doing wrong and what you need to change thanks to this feature. This also somewhat resembles how a programmer can debug their real programs as well. Alright, let's get into the scoring. First, is Human Resource Machine a fun game? There's a wide variety of puzzles. Depending on your programming experience, some of them might be on the easy side, but especially towards the end they get quite challenging. There are also additional optimization challenges in each level, which add some replayability to each puzzle. The game's visuals are quite nice. It has an interesting art style, and there's even some kind of a story going on in the background. 
it's frankly not that much, but it's a fun distraction between every few levels. The sound effects are all fairly simple blips and bloops, but they fit the game's feel, and the music, which is actually playing in the background of this video right now, is also quite nice and fits the atmosphere of the game. I'm giving Human Resource Machine a 3 out of 5 for fun. It keeps you interested with varying puzzles and weird characters and story, but if you're not really into programming, you might get stuck on the later levels, and they might prove too hard to simply power through them. Now, the second criteria. Is Human Resource Machine practical for learning about programming or improving your programming skills? The way you build programs in the game does somewhat resemble real programming, but it falls short in that the command set ends up being very limited. The programs you create in Human Resource Machine are a little bit different than what you might write in real life. The game is at its best as a way to flex your logical thinking and to help visualize how program code is executed. Although the command set is limited, the way you have to specify your programs in a sequence of actions is very similar to how programming works. Since the game displays the result of each command, it helps give you a better understanding of how a program might be executed by the computer. I'm giving Human Resource Machine a 3 out of 5 for practicality. The programs you build in the game only use a fairly basic set of commands, and due to the limitations, they are a bit different than what real code would be. But despite this, to solve the more advanced puzzles, you need to use techniques which are used in real programming, including loops and conditionals. The ability to watch your steps happen live can also help understand program flow a lot better. Overall, it took me about 5 to 6 hours to go through most, but not all of the levels. Someone who hasn't done as much programming as me would probably take longer. For learning purposes, Human Resource Machine can help understand basic program construction and program flow, and as such, it can be useful for beginners to help them grasp some basics like that. It's not a particularly long or have a ton of replayability, but it's also quite reasonably priced with this in mind. I would recommend Human Resource Machine to anyone who enjoys or is curious about solving logic or programming puzzles. Programming beginners might also find it useful, especially to better visualize how a program is executed by the computer. Alright, although this was a little bit different than my usual YouTube content, I hope you found the review interesting. If you would like to see more reviews of programming games or other similar things, please let me know. You can drop a comment below the video. Thank you for watching.